I play D.I. Annika Stranhead, who works for the uh, Marine Homicide Unit, and this is a new unit that I'm heading up. I should have got cupcakes. Part of the appeal for the team is they, they've heard about this kind of off-the-wall maverick detective, and they all want to be a part of it. Annika's very unusual. Actually, I, I, I can't think of many characters like her. I don't need to be the first you call, but I definitely need to be in the top three. She seems to me to be incredibly confident without ever being um, egotistical. It's very appealing to, to play someone who is as playful as her and has, has invested in her job and her life. But um, she's funny. You know, I like her. I, like her on, I liked her on the page the first time I read her. We're done. Thanks for coming, especially you. You were a real treat. Annika's origin started on the radio, and uh, I was commissioned to write what started out to be just a couple of crime shows for a new female detective. And then, because that was so successful and it did have an audience, and we had Nicola uh, right from the very start, uh, it soon became clear that it was a bit of a no-brainer to turn this into a, a TV show. Um, and that's where the journey started. And so by the time we got to the TV, we just knew exactly who she was, how she reacted, and the kind of choices that she makes. But now Annika and Nicola, for me, has always been sort of completely interchangeable, really, and a lot of how she and I talk outside of the show feels a little bit like material from Annika sometimes. So it's been a really important part of the writing process. I don't know if we would ever have been able to make Annika the show without Nicola Walker. She is Annika. She has her quirks and her wit and her literary brilliance down to a T. And, you know, she just is entirely relatable and uh, we just want to kind of be her friend and be with her uh, all the time. And we get her struggles and we get her daily grind and trying to be a leader and trying to be a mum and that she's sort of lonely in this unit and looking for a bit of romance. And I think, you know, we just all empathise. Why don't you bring anyone home? You know, like, boyfriends? She's not troubled in that kind of conventional troubled cop trope. Um, what she does is that she, uh, she sort of, she rolls with the punches very much, whilst at the same time being incredibly smart and solving crimes in particular ways. So one of the things we were interested in was looking at crimes which had this sort of more mythical or metaphorical sort of resonance, if you like, and that her key to solving them is sort of in this kind of bigger context, really, so that, that her intuitions are really wide-ranging. So I don't know if you are an expert on the history of harpoons, but I am or rather Google is. And I can tell you that they date back to Paleolithic times. And there's a reference to them in the Bible. And of course, Herman Melville had a lot to say about them in Moby Dick. She'll draw on kind of literary works or she'll draw on you know, sort of bits of history or she'll draw on, you know, various sort of the history of navigation or something. And we, we're interested in bringing that out so that it's not this, uh, a sort of forensics-based show at all. It's more about these sort of slightly more kind of human and epic kind of crimes. And so they're solved in that way as well. Um, and so she inhabits that world. And so she, it makes her a very sort of different and unique kind of detective. It works for her personality. She's got quite an odd way of looking at life. She, she looks at it, you know, through the books she's read, through stories she's been told. It all comes into the case. The Marine Homicide Unit is, by its nature, concerned with death, but Annika, by her nature, is concerned with life. And those two things for her run together while she's investigating these sometimes appalling crimes. She's also investigating her life and the lives of the people that she loves. <laughs>